Well, this is just fantastic. And I'm not actually saying that was sarcasm this time. But I did think, how am I going to approach the introduction for this episode? Because at one stage while I was playing the games, it looked like we were going to be destined for the playoffs. And now it actually looks like we are going to be getting automatic promotion. Honestly, what a turnaround it has been here if I can manage to get this team up. Now, in the last episode, we took on Sunderland and drew 1-1 at the Stadium of Light. A team that were currently battling us for the second promotion spot in the league. And uh, at one stage, it actually did look like we were going to definitely falter because, you know, I had a lot of injuries. Injuries. I had an injury crisis on my hands. A lot of my key players were out. Uh, suspensions were all over the place. And uh, yeah, it wasn't looking very good after that. Now, following that game against Sunderland away, we went to Fleetwood Town away and uh, drew 0-0. It was probably one of the worst games I've ever seen. It was diabolical. Like, I know I've said that a lot. It was one of the worst games I've seen. It generally was the worst game I've ever seen. After that result, Sunderland ended up leapfrogging us in the league after they won their match. And then our misery was compounded as in our following game against Doncaster Rovers, we ended up losing by a goal to nil at home. Now, Sunderland ended up winning in their match, which meant they were five points ahead of us with three games left. Now, following on for that, we took on Rotherham United away from home, a team that were currently fourth in the league, and Alex Samuel gave us the perfect start as he fired us in front in the first half. However, in the second half, Trey Cole equalised to bring Rotherham on level terms, but then Alex Samuel popped up once again uh, to fire in the winner and give us a 2-1 win, and they priced us three points. And then we found out that Sunderland lost at home by two goals to one to Colchester United, a team that actually, if they lost that match, would have been relegated, which was a pretty astounding result, really. And then following the Rotherham game, we then took on Portsmouth at home, a team that were currently fifth in the league and uh, had secured their playoff spot in the game before. And we ended up winning by three goals to nil as EK Ogbo, Marcus Brown and Alex Samuel from the penalty spot secured all three points. And what became even more astounding was then Luton, another team that were relegation threat, ended up beating Sunderland by two goals to nil, which meant we then leapfrogged Sunderland going into the final game of the season against Bradford City, where we are a point above Sunderland. Honestly, if I pull this off, it is a major miracle. Now, we haven't had any Adebayo Akinfilmo news recently, and I wanted to let you know uh, that he's now going on a coaching course to get his Continental C license, which I believe allows him to manage any team in England. Well, it looks like my job's on the line then. The Papa John's Trophy has also ended for another season, and the Tottenham under-23s ended up winning it by beating Arsenal in the final by two goals to one. And people say this is not a legitimate trophy. By the way, I hope the Tottenham under-23s enjoyed their lifetime supply of Papa John's, which by far is the worst pizza brand in the history of the world. Although I am more than happy to say that they are the best pizza brand if they wanted to sponsor this video. So, Robbie Cundy and Alex Samuel both signed two-year deals at the club, and Robbie Cundy is a player that I haven't played too much recently this year, uh, but he's definitely an option to have if we get promoted to the championship. And to be honest, Alex Samuel is a great option to have because, I mean, he scores consistently for me. Now, the defeat against Doncaster also saw me only able to name four substitutes on the bench because for some reason they didn't even give me any grayed out players. And also, the fact is I had no spare defenders on the bench, so what was I meant to do if I got an injury to one of them, or one of them got sent off? I guess we'll never know. So I've also found out that Hull and Charlton have been relegated from the championship. I mean, I really have to get out of this league. I really have to get out of this league. I do not want to play Charlton again and they score another 90th minute winner against me because it happened two games in a row last season. So some good news is that the physios say that Nart Ennis can now return to full training after his broken rib injury. But I mean, this happened about two days before the Rotherham game and I wasn't able to play him in either that or the Portsmouth game. So basically what I'm saying is he's not going to be match fit going into the final game of the season. Coventry City also managed to secure the League One title, which is a bit annoying for me because uh, that was a trophy that I should have won about three months ago because we were absolutely pissing it. Now, after the 3-0 win against Portsmouth, EK Ogbo, who scored in that game, uh, managed to get a £22,000 goal bonus uh, for reaching 10 league goals in a season. And I'm kind of annoyed now because I say it quite low because I didn't think he was going to get that many goals and I thought my money was safe. That proved me wrong. And of course, this game wouldn't make it easier for me because then they decided that Kamil Mizek had to go and pick up an injury in training, which has put him out for six weeks and the final game of the season, which means I'm now down to only one goalkeeper. <laughs> Just imagine that, going into the final game of the season where a win would take you up and you have one fit goalkeeper. Who, by the way, has only played about two games for me this season. Top goal scorer Noel Ennis also rallied the troops before our game against Bradford City, which is uh, pretty good for him, uh, despite the fact that I decided to drop him for this match. Oh, spoiled the team news already. And Top Basin on Twitter also said, just get ready for the inevitable disappointment. At least the Wickham fans have faith in me. And also, I decided to do a team meeting before our big clash against Bradford and I ruined the morale because I said that, you know, we've done well to get to this position. Let's make sure that we win in the last game and apparently they weren't happy with that. Ho ho ho, Proudy's fucking it up again. It was also nice to see that Wayne Routley said that I really motivated the players despite the notable highlights being both negative. Why did you do that? Funny.
And now here we go, our big clash against Bradford City and I've moved the formation again and I've decided to stick with the same team that I've played in the last two games against Rotherham and Portsmouth which got us those six points uh, and we do move back to a 4-2-3-1 formation. But obviously with Kamil Mizek injured for the rest of the season it means that Daniel Grimshaw makes his debut on the series in goal and I believe this is his league debut as well. I mean what a time to make it. Miles Kenlock, Josh Knight, Tosongui and Kane Ramsey will be our back four with Josh Knight returning uh, back in the series after his suspension. Another debutant on the series, Harry Clark, who I signed in the summer uh, in between the relegation from the championship to the uh, start of the League One season. I uh, haven't played him until recently and I found that he's actually very good in midfield. And he partners Sean Goss in the centre of midfield. And in our front four sees Trevor Clark playing on the left-hand side in a more advanced role than I have actually been playing him in recent games. Marcus Brown will be our number 10 while EK Ogbo will take place on the right-hand side. And Dan Nalondalu is the change as well because Niall Ennis is currently unfit and I believe Alex Samuel picked up an injury just before this game as well, which means that I'm going to have to rely on Dan Nalondalu a player who hasn't scored in god knows how long i'm not looking forward to this i'm not looking forward to this at all like of course we're in this situation again where i need a win to go up or need Sunderland to absolutely bottle it and lose their game and then we don't have to win our game you know basically there's so many permutations i already can't keep up i've just realized gareth ainsworth's the manager for bradford isn't he of course it could be gareth ainsworth that stops my wickham side his former team from going up to the championship i'm sure he'll want to be the only manager that has taken wickham from league one to the championship so he's going to do everything in his power to actually ruin me and i can't believe the biggest game of the season and i haven't got my number one goal keeper you hate to see it so i've told the boys that we have to just pick up on where we left off last time so if we beat portsmouth 3-0 we can easily beat bradford you know i i feel more nervous for this game than i did for the game against middlesbrough where i had to sort of win to stay up and then we ended up losing but the team below us lost so then we ended up staying up if that could happen again that'd be great i can't actually remember who sunderland are playing either I i've generally forgotten i think they're playing someone at the bottom of the league i think it's salford as well oh great yeah they get an easy tie i get away to bradford no one wants to go to bradford they've also got nick freeman playing in their team you know a former player of mine as well i can't wait for him to uh, inevitably score the winner as we uh, enter the playoffs so i'll try and keep you updated with what's happening in the sunderland game as we uh, do get a highlight after 11 minutes and uh, we are playing the same team we've played in in the last two matches uh, other than the fact that Alex Samuel has been dropped for Dan Delondalu so it's not really the same team is it and uh, Kane Ramsey's had an early shot and the goalkeeper's dropped it and uh I mean, it's quite exciting. That wasn't exciting in any way. I don't know what I'm talking about. But it's still 0-0 here and still 0-0 at Sunderland. And we just need Salford to pull their weight. I mean, Luton and Colchester pulled their weight. And they're trying to battle relegation. And uh, Bradford on the attack and Taylor's here over the bar. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. This could be quite exciting, uh, what happens in the next few minutes. We just need to score. Like, just score. I've got a striker up front who hasn't scored all season. And I've dropped my star striker who's got 18 goals this season. Just because he's not fit. I should have just played him from the off. And uh, Freeman's hit a shot straight, Grimshaw. That's fine. Uh, but we're fine. We're fine with the ball. You know, I've told the boys that we need to, you know, keep possession of the ball. We let the ball do the work, as they say in Sunday League. And uh, we're coming on to the attack here. And uh, Trevor Clark has been very good for us this year. He's been very consistent. And he uh, just puts an absolute shocking ball into the box, as I say that. Now, I'm not quite sure who the highlight's going to. It's, it's been going back and forth. And I, I think it's going to Bradford here. And Bradford are through on goal. And Nadisan hits it wide. Okay. Okay, and uh, oh, we do have a highlight on the struggle hard time. Sean Goss straight into the wall, and then straight into the wall again. Brilliant. Uh, who put him on free kicks? It, w it definitely wasn't me. Uh, as we uh, go to half time, a drawing 0 0. So we are halfway there. As long as Salford can hold Sunderland to a 0 0 draw, we should be fine. I'm going to say that we've been unlucky so far. We have been. Uh, we've had more shots than Bradford, so we've had more chances than Bradford, uh, but not more goals than Bradford. And that is how you win football matches. Thanks, Captain Obvious. I'm still holding on for dear life here. Uh, and uh, Bradford get the ball in the box. It's a great save by Grimshaw, by the way. My number two goalkeeper who's played two games this season. Absolutely sensational. And that is why I hired him hired him that's why I oh and he's pulled off another brilliant save bloody hell you just don't see that in the premier league obviously because he wouldn't be playing in the premier league because he's not good enough and uh oh he's pulled off another save three saves in a minute get this man a new contract all right we're gonna uh we're gonna change things up we're gonna bring on Niall ennis now he i know he's not fit but we need a goal uh we do need a goal alex samuel is not fit either so i'm not gonna bring him on but liam cullen is gonna come off for ek ugbo on the right hand side so we're just gonna freshen things up in the front three. Uh, Sunderland are losing, I think. I think so Sunderland are losing. Oh, my goodness. They have absolutely bottled it. And Harry Clark shoots at the key part. Now, all we need is Salford to hold on. I don't know. Channel some inner energy or something. Just allow it to happen. And Freeman. Oh, God, of course. Yep. Nick Freeman. Yep. Former player of mine. Scores against me. 
Now, if Sunderland draw their game, I don't know if we're actually in the playoffs because I don't know about goal difference. I, I generally can't remember. I've not been looking at the table too much. Uh, Sunderland's goal difference is worse than ours. Now, can we just equalise, boys? Like, let's not go through the pressure of this. And uh, Josh Knight puts it at the keeper. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe we're about to lose. Oh, well, there's still 20 minutes left. I, I don't know why I preempted that. You know, we get to the final game of the season. Oh, boys, we need to win this game. And then we end up losing the game. But then the team that are battling us to, you know, get whatever we need to get, uh, they end up losing too. I'll tell you what, Sunderland have completely bottled it in the last three games. They had three relegation threatened sides and they managed to go behind against all of them. And Sean Goss is uh, straight into the wall again. Who has given this man the free kicks? I've got no one to replace him with. Uh, Alex Patterson's coming on uh, into midfields. We're going to... Um freshen things up there oh Sunderland are drawing oh no oh no we need to we need to pull this turn this around boys oh god we're only in the top two on goal difference i tell you what if we bottle this now oh Liam Cullen he's equalized here we go boys one more that's all we need one more goal and we are going up oh Liam Cullen oh goodness me like the substitute has come off the bench it's a great ball forward by Josh Knight by the way and Liam Cullen on the volley puts it in the near post Oh, this is going to be a big 10 minutes. As far as I know, Sunderland are still drawing. Uh, we're drawing as well. We need to turn this around. We need a second. Uh, boys, this is not the time to, uh, you know, draw a game. Like, maybe earlier on in the season when we were losing 1-0 to Doncaster at home, you know, maybe we could have drawn that game. Now, Bradford played long ball, and I have set up the team to deal with it, but we're not dealing with it very well in the last seven minutes. And Nick Freeman's running down this right-hand side. He has been a danger man for Bradford, but we uh, do win the ball back, and uh, we will counter-attack from this. And uh, we won't counter-attack from this because we've given the ball away. And uh, Bradford on the attack. Uh, and Taylor. Well, Carl Taylor puts it wide. It's in the box. Oh, it's blocked. And Carl Taylor fires it wide. It's bloody old Bradford have had all the chances here. I think, like, I think Salford are drawing. But I don't know because the result is not appearing on the screen. It's over. I mean, have we gone up? I literally don't know. Uh, have we gone up? Like, I, uh, I mean, those team talk options don't really give me anything. We've gone up! <laughs> I can't believe it! As if Sunderland have completely bottled it, like, in the last three games of the season. Unbelievable scenes. Unbelievable. You just can't write scripts like this. We're back in the championship, boys! I mean, we should have won the league. I don't know why I'm getting happy about, you know, just scraping promotion on the final day of the season. Oh, well. Next season, relegation battle again.